as a major political event in China. The two sessions, which refer to the annual meetings of China's top legislature and top political advisory body, have just concluded here in Beijing. This year's gathering takes on special importance. China, a country with a population of 1.4 billion, has just declared a complete victory in eradicating absolute poverty. And the country will embark on a new journey with its next five-year plan. Some key points in the government work report and the outline of the 14th five-year plan for national economic and social development and the long-range objectives through the year 2035 are widely discussed home and abroad. Now I'm at the Great Hall of the People where these meetings were held, so follow me for a brief tour of these key points. China, as the only major economy with positive growth last year, sets its GDP growth target for 2021 significantly below the consensus of analysts, who expects the number could beat 8%. Such a modest growth target will enable the world's second largest economy to devote full energy to promoting reform, innovation, and high-quality development. One significant feature of China's modernization is to improve people's well-being, as evidenced by the country's Herculean efforts in eradicating absolute poverty over the past years. So China is always committed to the people-centered philosophy of development. A series of measures will be implemented over the next five years, including increasing people's income, boosting employment, building a high-quality education system, and improving the multi-level social security system. In pursuit of stellar scientific and technological achievements, China is upholding innovation as a central role in its modernization drive while making itself a country of innovators. According to the government work report, R&D spending will grow by over 7% annually over the next five years. China also aims to basically establish a new system for higher-level open economy in the next five years. It will promote liberalization and facilitation of trade and investment, and steadily promote the opening up of financial sectors, including banking, securities, insurance, and futures. The country will further shorten the negative list for foreign investment, and promote fair competition between domestic and foreign-funded enterprises. To promote green transformation of development, China will make concrete efforts to achieve the peaking of carbon emissions by 2030 and carbon neutrality by 2060. In 2021, energy consumption per unit of GDP and carbon dioxide emissions per unit of GDP will be reduced by 13.5% and 18% respectively. The rioting and turbulence that occurred in Hong Kong reveals that the existing electoral system in the Hong Kong SAR has obvious loopholes and deficiencies which the anti-China destabilizing elements jumped on to take into their hands the power to administer the Hong Kong SAR. Necessary measures must be taken to improve the electoral system and remove existing institutional risks to ensure the administration of Hong Kong by Hong Kong people with patriots as the main body. Ultimately, a new democratic electoral system suited to Hong Kong's realities and with Hong Kong characteristics will be formed. For the world, the two sessions are an important window to understand China. And the two sessions can also provide an opportunity for the world to better learn the latest trends of the second largest economy and the backgrounds of its policies.